Uh, welcome to the Kansas City Public Library. I'm uh, Crosby Kemper, the director of the, the library, and uh, uh, we're honored to be uh, the host, the venue, uh, for this great event. Uh, it's our hope that Kansas City uh, has become, is becoming, will become uh, the next generation hub for creative activity uh, in many ways, but particularly on the internet, particularly in the, in the digital world, particularly in terms of crossing the digital divide. Uh, and we've, we've got a lot of things going on here. We've got Google Fiber, we've got Sprint and their accelerator. Uh, the cities on, on both sides of the, the state line, uh, our, our suburbs and our inner city working closely together in a, a unique partnership. Uh, we have the Kauffman Foundation interested in education, in entrepreneurship, and particularly in technologies enablement in both of those areas. We have the, we have the Cerner Corporation, one of the fastest growing technology corporations in America, very concerned with workforce development and technology. We have the attention of Mozilla, US Ignite, the National Science Foundation, sponsors of, of today's event, uh, the IMLS, the MacArthur Foundation, the Hall Family Foundation, the Buffett Foundation, and others. Uh, we have great things going on in our science city at Union Station, STEM and STEAM uh, uh, being united there. We have a lot of focus on early childhood, and yesterday, President Obama recognized Kansas City as the creative crossroads of the United States by appointing uh, the current head of the uh, Kauffman Center for the Performing Arts, great friend of the library and all cultural activities in Kansas City, Jane Chu, as the new head of the National Endowment for the Arts. So we have, we have a lot of wonderful things going on in this community, and I, I just like to say a couple of words about the importance of technology, what the library itself is going to be doing uh, over the next few years, uh, and how we think we can be a focus uh, for some of the transformational things that many of you are doing uh, and, uh, and will do. Uh, computers in the library are not a new thing. Uh, over the last 20 years, they've become one of the most important, and probably from the point of view of the underserved in our inner city communities, the most important thing uh, that we do. It is where the people on the other side of the digital divide cross the digital divide, and all of you know that, and, 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 I, and I think most of our leadership knows that. Um, we are an online library, like most uh, larger libraries in the United States today. Much of our activity happens online. Much of it is digital. Many things that, that we were doing uh, in our physical space are increasingly being done uh, in a virtual way. Um, 20 to 30 percent. Google did a study of this, Pew's done this study, we, we have our own uh, rule of thumb in the library, but somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of our patrons are, are not online, do not have access to the internet, do not have a computer, do not have the skill sets to use a computer, don't have the, the, the basic uh, economic wherewithal, uh, or have the interest, and interest is a key thing from our point of view. In, engendering interest, and a lot of what you're going to hear today, a lot of what you're doing, uh, is about creating interest in the right places, uh, and then skills, uh, and then the ability uh, uh, to, to access. Um, one thing we do know, in the Kansas City School District, which is the same boundaries as, as our library district, there's a 40 percent mobility. Uh, that is to say, during the course of the school year, uh, the average, 40 percent of the children in the school district will have, a, have at least two addresses. Think about that from the point of view of digital access. Very difficult. What, what Shelby, what the schools, hospitals, library uh, alliance, broadband alliance uh, refers to as anchor institutions become really important in that kind of a universe. The library, the schools, obviously, and other community organizations, really important. So what you do here today is really important to us, and we think the library is really important to you uh, in, in doing this. So what are we doing? Uh, with the help of the IMLS and the MacArthur Foundation, we've created a digital media lab. We're taking it mobile with the second generation of, of funding. funding. Uh, you'll, re you'll hear today from Sprint about their, their mobile apps. We're doing mobile apps in the library world, uh, the kind of things that they're working on and many other institutions, uh, our hospitals, our medical, great medical complex in Kansas City, Cerner, et cetera. You're going to see the, the applications that can also be uh, uh, used in the, in the library. Um, uh, literacy centers uh, in, in which we are introducing uh, uh, the use of online resources uh, to uh, preschool uh, kids, uh, the, the early childhood focus, uh, which is very strong in Kansas City, uh, is going to be increasingly enabled digitally. Creative Commons. 
Uh, library is going to be a place where uh, hackers of all ages will come to, uh, to use the gigabit technology uh, and, and be creative, uh, both for self-development and ultimately for economic transformation. Uh, you'll hear today from David LeCrone uh, and Chepto Kosatan Buckner. Uh, our, uh, David is our uh, IT director, the, uh, sorry, the, the branch manager of our digital branch. Uh, Chepto is our deputy director about our software lending library, uh, which we think is a unique concept that will spread across the country, which basically will enable uh, anyone, regardless of their socioeconomic position, their skill sets, et cetera, to use uh, software uh, and use it uh, uh, digitally, remotely. Um, uh, and, and then I want to talk about the, for, for one second more, about the biggest disappointment uh, of the online world and what we're going to do about it. I think the biggest disappointment are the MOOCs, uh, the, the uh, uh, online uh, courses which are being used uh, in huge and dramatic numbers and are being completed uh, uh, in huge and, and, and dramatic uh, incompleteness. Um, the, the reason for that, I think, is the failure of education in the online universe to be personal and to create uh, spaces uh, where people can uh, uh, interact uh, in a normal classroom kind of way. And I think there's, I think there's an answer to that. And there are answers in this community already going on, uh, in places like Union Station, uh, where they, they have a, a virtual classroom uh, going uh, in uh, uh, the Missouri Innovation Campus that the Lee Summit High School of Cerner uh, and the University of Central Missouri uh, are doing. Uh, and the library, we believe, can be central to that as well. Uh, we're looking at what I call a local con academy, a local digital academy idea in which resources from places like UMKC and KU, our universities here, uh, Metropolitan Community Colleges, Johnson County Community College, uh, and, 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 the, and the great online resources that can be created uh, with, with our digitally enabled companies like Cerner, uh, like Sprint. Uh, Kansas City is a place where most of the great sports stadiums in the world are being designed by companies like Populous and HNTB and 360. Um, uh, Freight Quote, one of the largest digital logistics companies in the country. And in the crossroads, uh, immediately uh, south of downtown. Uh, we have uh, one of the largest digital marketing communities in the United States. All these resources, we think, plus the great public programming in the Kansas City Public Library, we think it's the best public programming in the United States. We turn that, all of those resources, into a virtual uh, online classroom uh, and then provide spaces that can, when necessary, turn it into a real classroom. Uh, in our libraries, in our community centers, public housing, uh, Union Station, the Kauffman Foundation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The world's ready for this, and the people in this room today are the people who are going to provide it, uh, and uh, the Kansas City Public Library uh, intends to be a leader, a convener, uh, uh, and uh, uh, an app maker, uh, and an app user. Uh, we intend to be a part of this revolution and to make Kansas City truly the creative crossroads uh, of the United States. Uh, so welcome to all of you. And now I want to introduce a community catalyst, exactly what we're doing here today, uh, the community catalyst for the Mozilla Foundation, uh, Kerry Keefe, uh, who will take over from here. Kerry. Um, you're, you're, uh, if you parked in the garage, we're, we can stamp your ticket. I believe there's a stamp at the desk, uh, so you can park for free. Um, also, the Wi-Fi uh, word, the Wi-Fi password uh, is dictionary. <laughs> and there, there are bathrooms back here, bathrooms on the third, fourth, and fifth floor. I knew all of that except for where the bathrooms are, so I could have handled them. Well, welcome to our fantastic event. This is really inspiring to look out across the room and see a lot of faces, some of whom I, I know well. Um, many of you I'm, I'm looking forward to, get to getting to know much better uh, because we have a lot of work to do. But this is such a cool way to start the day when you, when you realize that, that most of you have given up a day of your life um, to engage in this conversation. And that means something, that we are very excited about um, the willingness of, of the Kansas City community to convene and to talk about what the gigabit, building the gigabit city can do. 
My goal for all of you today in coming here and giving us a day um, is that you leave knowing exactly how you and your organization can participate in this project. We have given a lot of thought, careful, thoughtful construction and methodology to how we actually put actionable um, options out there for, for you to participate in. We're so excited to be able to continue um, through community calls and community meetups to really engage you as a community. So we've called this event a kickoff for good reason. Um, it's not just the start of something new. It's not just something launching. We're actually kicking something off. And we're going to put that ball in the air because we know somebody's going to catch it. And we're going to be able to take this to the next step. So we're very excited about what this does for you as a community and what you can do to actually participate in the success of this project. With that, our day kind of looks like um, we have leaders from Mozilla, we've got the KC Digital Drive, we're going to hear more from the Kansas City Public Library, we're going to let you get up out of your seats and walk around and consume an awful lot of great content from local partners, uh, national partners, and people who have a vested interest in fueling technology um, in education, digital learning, and workforce development. So I encourage you to get to each one of the 12 um, panelists and providers and speakers that we have that will be up on the second floor and the fifth floor later this morning. And then we'll actually come back and you'll get into breakout sessions based on the tracks and the, session and the topics to which you have an affinity. And we're going to kick this thing off so you can catch the ball and move it forward. Um, with that, I'd like to welcome to Kansas City and introduce to all of you Chris Lawrence with Mozilla. And you're on. Let me adjust here to my height. Um, hello, everybody. As you heard, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris. Thanks, Gary, for the nice introduction. Um, it's really a thrill, and I'm deeply excited to be here today. Um, you know. Thank you, Crosby. You kind of kicked it off in a great way. You kind of got me really charged up and excited and I think really framed the opportunity and, and the need, um, not only for this day, but then for, for really the kickoff. Um, and Mozilla is thrilled and excited to be both in Kansas City and Chattanooga with this work, which I'll talk about a little bit more in detail and we'll explore all day. But um, we're maybe a, a sub point of our excitement is that we get to be in, in the two barbecue capital cities of the universe, right? <laughs> And while we look forward to, to building uh, deep colleagues and participation between Chattanooga and Kansas City, we do look forward to the many debates and tastings to see who can win in that, in that battle. Um, so I want to do a couple things here to start us off. One, I'm just going to take an informal, informal poll. Um, and you can vote more than once, right? This is like Chicago politics. Um, <laughs> So just raise your hand if this applies to you and kind of get a read for the room and, and probably look around and see, you know, who we all are. So just raise your hand if you're, you're a teacher or involved in the formal education system. Oh, nice. What about if you're an informal educator working in museums and cultural? Great. Awesome. Um, what about techies and hackers and technologists? All right. Corporate leaders are people representing corporate interests and awesome. We've got a good group. Um, Nonprofit professionals. Awesome. Um, and then this one might be a bit of a ringer. Librarians. There we go. Give it up. Home team. And then I think probably a key group that maybe isn't always thought of when we do these kind of who are the stakeholders and who are in the room. How many of you are parents? Great. So I think we have the right mix of people for the kind of work that Mozilla is going to want to do here in the community and really um, work with you all to build. So I'm glad that we have those kind of people here. The other thing I want to do is get interactive for just a little bit. It's going to be a real sage on the stage morning, but only in a very truncated way. So, but maybe we can start off the kind of spirit and energy we're going to want today and going forward with a little peer interaction. So if we could all take 60 seconds and just find a partner for you teachers in the room. We'll call this a, the turn and talk, right? Um, and just what, what brought you here? And maybe a, 
a quick idea of what you might hope we'd be celebrating a year from now. If we convened a year from now today, what it is we would be talking about that we are proud of. So go ahead and take a minute. Ten second warning. All right, and maybe we could bring it back. All right, everybody, thank you. We'll do the, there we go. We'll do the, the old teacher trick, right? <laughs> the room is not as good as kindergartners. There we go. All right, let's bring it back. Um, well, I just have to say that I got a real jolt of, of energy when as soon as I kind of prompted you to go, the energy level and the chatter just kind of went right up to this grand roof here. So that was really exciting and hopefully that's a good way to kick off some of the things we'll be thinking about today. So for just a few minutes I want to talk a little bit about what Mozilla is doing and why we're so excited to be partnering with the community in here in Kansas City. Um, Mozilla um, is deeply committed to, to web and digital literacy and then through the design thinking around connected learning, which I'll unpack a little bit here. Um, and really, Mozilla helps to create, wants people to create, not just consume. And whether in our example that's thousands of coders contributing to Firefox or it's the growing communities of people that are writing the programs um, and the lesson plans and the curriculum and the process to help people come together and make and learn the web. Um, that's what we want the Mozilla community to thrive and, and do. And what we're really working towards is an internet that we describe in three ways um, and sometimes say the web we want. And so the one, it's knowable, right? It's, it's transparent, we can see it, we understand it, and we really view that as a, as, a, as a citizenship issue, as a literacy issue. Also, it's interoperable, so you can play with it. It's a space for innovation. People understand that, it, that you can do things with it, you can build, that essentially the web can be a series of, of Lego kits. And that it's ours, right? That it's open to everyone and we get to define it. It's not defined for us. And so to realize this vision, we recognize the need to help people around this, the world discover their sense of agency as well as cultivate their technical skills. So a piece of this, what we're doing at Mozilla, is, is called the Webmaker Project, um, which um, I am helping to lead. So senior director of the Webmaker community. And really what that is, um, is how do we build these learning communities and bring that together with the technical skill? My background is personally in education and as an educator, um, coming to this world of digital literacy and digital skills. And so what Webmaker is doing is really we think about it in three ways. We're really building a suite of creativity tools on and for the web. And not only are we building them, that we're also offering spaces for the tools that other people build to be brought together with that. Some of you may have heard of some of our tools. Um, 
they have kind of cool cheeky names like X-ray goggles and thimble and popcorn maker, um, which I happily describe to greater detail in, in the unconference section. But it's also about building, not just us building, but us with the community, the curriculum and the teaching resources that go with this web and digital literacy agenda. And then third, it really is building that global community that's going to come together and mix local interests with global connections. And so we think that this web literacy is essential because to have the web we want, we need to understand what we describe as the culture, the citizenship, and yes, the mechanics of the web. So no longer is it just about coding necessarily or about understanding, you know, the sort of developer or hacker mindset. It's also about all of us coming together to see what the culture of the web has given us and how we can protect it, and then how we become and grow good citizens of that web space. And the realization that the distinction between sort of real life and digital life is becoming more and more relevant daily. And so we have new learning techniques have to be sort of designed and remixed to sort of meet this challenge. And so we've aligned and are helping to grow something called connected learning. And you heard Crosby talk a little bit about the work of MacArthur Foundation um, here as it operationalizes at the library um, and their work in their digital media and learning portfolio, um, which is where this connected learning idea comes from. And if you want to look at it more deeply, you can go to connectedlearning.tv, but I'll quickly describe what its core tenets are. So from a values perspective, it's about equity, full participation, and social connection. Uh, learning principles are really designed and described as it's interest powered. It's really led by what students and learners want to know and need to know. It's peer supported. We, it's no longer a world in which we have sort of top down, um, you know, knowledge delivery systems. It's really about more horizontal and it's peer to peer. And we also know those of us that work with, with young, with teenagers and children, that social is important. And then it's also academically oriented, that this is interacting with the kind of uh, career and college readiness agenda that we need for our youth. And then from design principles, how do we put this together? It's production centered. It's that building going from um, consumption to production. It's openly networked and it's shared and it has a shared purpose. We're all in this together. And so one of Webmaker's key programs is the Hive Learning Network. Hives are local networks that solve local problems and leverage their proximity and connection to local needs and assets while aligning with a global set of values, strategies, and design principles. They are place specific. Members pre represent organizations including libraries, museums, schools, nonprofits, startups, and others that create opportunities for youth and learn within, the be within and beyond the confines of traditional school and classroom experiences. Members are equally committed to designing innovative practices and tools that build the field and have build for the field and have greater impact and contribute to their own professional development with an active community of practice. The gigabit technology being pi pioneered here in Chattanooga and other places provides the green light to build these communities and of practice that we know can leverage these next generation opportunities, apps and technology. And that's why we're excited about bringing this global community and exploring web and digital literacy within these gigabit communities. We feel like this, that is the right, almost motivator, excuse, and sort of form and function to really up-level cities with the gigabit technology to rally around this cause. Kansas City has already invested, obviously, in the future by building this high-speed network. Now it's time to realize the potential public benefits, starting with education and workforce development, which is where Mozilla is really putting its energy in. We're investing in innovation and experimentation. The Gigabit Community Fund will give local organizations a jump start so they can develop, experiment, and begin putting the applications into practice, realizing the full potential of this technology. No longer can it be about what potentially can happen. We can go and start building the prototypes, the programs, and the tools right now to stop talking about it and demonstrate it. This, so this is the time to dive in. The gigabit networks have the potential to change how we live, how we work, how we learn, and how we interact with the web. As much, if not more, than the move from dial-up to broadband. This is new territory. We want to empower local innovators to explore and define its full impact by building practical, practical tangible projects rooted in local communities. So for the project here that we're talking about today, it's a partnership with the National Science Foundation and US Ignite 
um, that Mozilla is launching the Gigabit Community Fund here in Kansas City in Chattanooga to support these local innovators and develop education and workforce practices that can be iterated on and spread to other places. Um, we will be establishing a Kansas City Gigabit Community Fund, one of our big announcements today, that is going to seed it and will seed it for this year with $150,000, which we'll give away in two granting cycles um, and, and in a pretty short amount of time. Um, these should be prototypes around innovation that can be done this year and be, can be kicked off using the process to start building Hive Learning communities here in Chattanooga and Kansas City as well, so that you actually build the networks of practice that can support this kind of innovation in the learning space going forward. Um, Carrie is going to be sharing more details later today about this, and we'll also be sharing how to find out the details. We'll be announcing the nuts and bolts information about, about going at, after that money in the fund within the next couple weeks. The Gigabit Community Fund follows the Mozilla Ignite Apps Challenge program, which supported 22 teams working on Gigabit app prototypes. The fund aims to bring discoveries out of the lab and into, into the field, into classrooms, into library spaces, into storefronts, into public places. We want, to, we want to move from the Gigabit prototypes to minimum viable projects amongst these tools with the, and put these in the hands of users. We are seeking dedicated individuals, community catalysts, educators, students, developers, and other curious and industrious folks who want to explore and experiment with cutting edge tools and create new learning job opportunities. Most importantly, we don't want to come to Kansas City as outsiders, thinking that we have all the answers. You know, it, I, don't want to, I don't want people to think that myself and my Mozilla colleagues are carpetbaggers six to eight months from now. <laughs> that is, we need local partners. We want to help empower the local communities. That's why we are excited to deeply partner and work with folks like Aaron Deacon and Kansas City Digital Divide, with pe folks here at the library. You've already, we're in this magnificent space and the kind of people that give it life. Um, I have been deeply excited by the idea of the software lending library since I was introduced to it about six months ago. That is the kind of innovation that I think has transformative powers you think about in communities and how people think creatively um, and, and do their work and do their hobbies and live their lives. So I'm deeply excited to be here at this kickoff. And what I'm mostly excited about is that after a short program this morning, we're really going to move in, into production. And we're really going to start building things. And this afternoon, there's going to be some great ideas, some great collaborations, and some great groups of people. So. Let's start building together. Thank you, Kansas City. And I'm going to wel welcome my colleague, Carrie, back to the stage. That was awesome. Thank you, Chris. Oh. I would like to introduce um, somebody who has been a pillar in this community, um, doing amazing work in digital inclusion, um, piloting projects that use gigabit technology and infrastructure. Um, he's a brilliant guy, and I've had the, the pleasure of working with him pretty closely over the last three weeks, which probably doesn't sound like a long time, but it's kind of like dog years. It feels like it's already been um, a year. So I would like to welcome up here Aaron Deacon. Thanks, Carrie, for such a nice introduction. Uh, thanks to the library for hosting us once again, uh, to BrainZooming for uh, your help in facilitating this afternoon. A uh, special thanks to Mozilla and US Ignite and National Science Foundation for all that you're doing to, to expand this work in the community, uh, to Social Media Club of Kansas City members who are helping to staff and to, to tweet about what's happening here. But most of all, thanks to all of you who are here today. It is so exciting to be back here at the library two and a half years after we did Building the Gigabit City the first time when none of us really knew what a gigabit fiber network was, uh, when we didn't really fully appreciate uh, and, and you know, are, are still learning what the possibilities of this network are for our community. Uh, the fact that so many of you have, have stayed engaged in this conversation, I think, is a real testament to the ability of this community to embrace the opportunity uh, and also to the fact that we are getting things done. You know, if you keep having conversations and keep having conversations, but you don't uh, sort of move the needle, you don't move the ball down the field, as Chris says, people stop showing up. 
Uh, so, so the fact that we're able to, to have this conversation and to keep moving forward today, even if it's slower sometimes than we'd like, uh, I think is, is a real testament to our ability to, to accomplish things. Um, and I'm really excited to have uh, Mayor James and Mayor Holland here. Uh, because without them, KC Digital Drive would not be possible, and we wouldn't have been able to make as much progress as we have. Uh, this organization was started a year and a half ago after their Mayor's Bias and Innovations team, uh, led by Mike Burke, uh, who is with us today, and Ray Daniels, who couldn't be with us today, uh, finished their work. And we've spent the last year and a half uh, working hard on digital inclusion and digital literacy, working on economic opportunities and economic development, uh, working with other cities around the world to sort of pioneer how you build this gigabit economy, and especially, and most relevant for today, working on what the applications are uh, for this gigabit internet. Um, and we've, we've made a lot of progress. You know, two and a half years ago, uh, it was sort of a, a gleam in the eye of the Kansas City community, and we threw out a lot of crazy ideas, uh, some of which have come closer to reality than maybe we thought they would, some of which are still crazy ideas. Uh, but that's okay, and, and I hope that there are more crazy ideas that come out this afternoon. Uh, we, were, we were really fortunate to be able to partner with Mozilla and US Ignite closely over the past year uh, to host two gigabit hackathons, and a lot of you in the room were, were part of those, uh, one last March and one last November, uh, to really start moving some of the crazy ideas into the technology prototypes that, that we need to, to implement. Um, and, and so we have actually uh, a whole handful of projects that are actually underway, and, and people don't really know about a lot of this stuff, um, but the University of Missouri uh, and Marge Skubik are working on a project um, at a senior uh, living facility in South Kansas City to monitor uh, uh, movements within the apartment, an advanced sensor network that does real-time data processing to help seniors age in place for longer. Uh, KU has a few different telehealth projects that they're working on, uh, one to uh, monitor dementia patients in home and another one to provide access in schools to telehealth, um, uh, telehealth opportunities and, and trauma and grief counseling. Uh, there's the software lending library project that you've already heard about and we'll, we'll continue to hear more about. Uh, Planet Impact is here, which came out of our March hackathon last year and uses technology for advanced civic planning. Uh, and we also have Briefcase Health, uh, which is another uh, school and telehealth uh, project that uh, Children's Mercy Team is working on. And, and all these projects represent uh, about three quarters of a million dollars in investment and grant money that has actually come into this community, uh, is actually being deployed, and is actually sort of in the process of being implemented. So we've, we've got technologies, some of which are in progress right now, but others of which are really in sort of an embryonic stage still. And we have technologies uh, that that are sometimes developed um, in a vacuum and sometimes are developed with the community, and we really are looking to, to put those into the community, to move those forward, and, and to go from having sort of a technology prototype to a technology pilot. Uh, and, and we've been able to do that because of the participation of this community. Uh, you know, you heard Chris talk about the Hive network model, and that's really what we've been able to do and how we've worked with these partners over the past year. Uh, Casey Digital Drive runs with a very lean staff. Uh, and if, if you know much about us, you know how lean. Uh, but which is great, because we've got such a, a strong community uh, that really picks up, picks up the ball. And so uh, for a project like Software Lending Library, we're able to work with the Kansas City Library. We're able to find the technologists either within the community or within our national community and, and pair them together uh, and, and also find the community of practice that exists here. So we need the anchor institutions, we need the actual practitioners, we need the community that benefits from these applications, and we need the technologists that can make it happen. And that's really the way that we have functioned, is to bring those groups together. Uh, and we're excited to have so many and such a diverse crowd in the room today. Uh, and, and also to um, lay out a, a new kind of program for us. Uh, we've been doing this for the past year, um, but we also have uh, to, to help carry these projects forward, a, a community resource partner program uh, that we're kicking off. And there are a couple people, uh, we've, we've started to sort of reach out and, and figure out how to formalize this. Uh, BKD and Think Big Partners are both here, and they have committed to uh, spend some manpower uh, over the next eight months to put some of these projects in re into, into action. Uh, the teams that form and the proposals that get submitted will, will start work today uh, and will continue over the next couple months, but you're going to need help. And there are a lot of corporate partners in our community that are willing to help, uh, and we're going to help facilitate that process. 
Uh, and we also have, uh, as strong community partners, our provider community uh, that is here today. Uh, it's important, of course, to know that none of this would be happening right now if, if Google Fiber hadn't chosen Kansas City as one of its test markets. So we're excited to have Google here. But it's also important to recognize that the project is about Kansas City, uh, and we have a lot of providers in town that do a lot for this community. Uh, Comcast uh, and Time Warner, uh, because of this, have decided to merge, actually. Um, so we're, we're excited uh, to, to have them here today. Uh, Sprint with their accelerator, um, but, but in seriousness, I mean, Comcast and, and Time Warner both have uh, their Connect a Million Minds and their Internet Essentials programs. Uh, they're doing work to reach out to, the, to cross the digital divide. Uh, they are working with our schools and with our anchor institutions to help provide connectivity. And all the providers understand sort of what the opportunity is for next generation networks. So we're excited to, to kick that off. Um, and, and just wanted to say, uh, you know, again, looking back over the past year and a half, uh, to give a special thanks, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, to Mike Burke uh, and to Ray Daniels, who have really been um, visionary leaders in how they've been able to help us implement this work. Uh, at the beginning of the playbook, there's a, there's a line uh, that you've probably heard quoted before if you've gone to any of our events, that this work is only 10% about technology and about 90% about sociology. Uh, and Mike and Ray were great assets in that they were not technologists. And I mean that in the best way possible. You know, they are people who are deeply rooted in this community uh, and who had a really uh, strong sense and respect of what was needed to move the community forward and the leadership that they have provided, uh, first to the mayor's bi state team and then to Casey Digital Drive, has been phenomenal. And of course, uh, to, to take it one step further, uh, that leadership was uh, empowered by our mayors. Uh, Mayor Sly James uh, and first Mayor Joe Reardon and now Mayor Mark Holland have been also visionary in how they have really grasped this opportunity, how they have empowered the community to take advantage of it, how they have pushed us forward and given uh, the community here the freedom to be entrepreneurial, uh, the freedom to be excited, uh, the assets and the resources to help take certain initiatives forward and to understand that the internet doesn't recognize a state line. Uh, you know, the, the regional cooperation that has been demonstrated throughout the course of this project has been really inspiring to me and uh, I'd like to thank you both, uh, Mayor Holland and Mayor James, for your ongoing support and welcome you to this stage to help build the Gigabit City. I don't think we've established the speaking order, but I will tell you, Chris, that uh, Mayor Holland and I were in the back, and when you said that you were working with the two barbecue capitals, uh, we, as we assumed you meant Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. We couldn't figure out who the other one would be. <laughs> but you'll learn. Um, and it's nice to be introduced to a guy that, while in Barcelona, uh, got me addicted to cava and exposed me to pickpockets. <laughs> nice to see you again, Aaron. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, good morning to everybody, and thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to thank the Public Library for hosting us. Uh, they do this quite frequently, and it's a, it's a pretty awesome deal. Uh, this is really an exciting day for Kansas City as we continue to make our city a true hub for innovation. Uh, the new high-speed infrastructure in Kansas City is providing gigabit speeds and setting us apart from other cities. Uh, it's a network that's making a lot of people stand up and take notice, quite frankly. Uh, I spend a lot of time with mayors from other cities and they're all very curious about what uh, Mark Holland and Kansas City, Kansas and I are doing and how we're doing it together. Uh, it's really establishing our city as a place other cities want to be like in some respects. It's a place where we can grow a business, build a home, fulfill dreams, um, and all of that while being a part of the excitement of what's going on in the city and the benefits that we have as a result of being accessed or being having access to one gigabit speed. Uh, none of this, of course, would be possible without Google uh, recognizing that we are indeed 
uh, the two cities, the best two cities in the country uh, to spend time and uh, eat barbecue. Uh, you know, and that, and, you know, and it's really kind of curious that when we ask what were some of the factors that caused you to come to Kansas City, and they said it's the easiest place that we found to work with. Um, so as you have your own tribulations with uh, one city hall or another, remember, Google thinks that we're a lot easier than every place else. <laughs> uh, so back in 2012, when we established the Mayor's Bi-State Innovation Team, we understood uh, what we were really going for was to satisfy a need to get some cross-sector pilot projects going and to demonstrate the potential of gig gigabit connectivity. Uh, KC Digital Drive, Mozilla, US Ignite, and the National Science Foundation have rolled up their sleeves, dug into the ways in which gigabit applications can add to our community's reputation for innovation and high-tech creativity, and they're here to work with us. Uh, together with uh, Mozilla Community Fund, uh, we'll be able to determine the measurable impact on our residents' everyday lives. And we'll be able to focus on the needs of our local community, uh, specifically how they relate to education and workforce development. Uh, these are two areas uh, that are hugely valuable to this type of a community. Um, I was with the governor as we were um, uh, announcing more jobs, which is something that's becoming a habit that I'm getting very used to. Um, and, and he said something that I hadn't heard before, but I was glad he said it. He said that of all the states in the country, the one that the U.S. Department of Labor says is experiencing the fastest rate of growth in high-tech jobs isn't California, it's not Massachusetts, it's Missouri. And if Missouri is experiencing that type of growth, I can tell you dollars to donuts that Kansas City is leading the way in Missouri. So we have a lot of good things going for us, and these partnerships, this type of a partnership we're talking about today, is just a prime example of that. It's great to be recognized by people who live in your community. It's also great to be recognized by people who don't and come to your community because of what they find out about it. Uh, all of this are, are very connected uh, to everything that we do in City Hall. Education and workforce development uh, are strategies that we have championed since day one. Uh, the strategies that we employ for both buckets require participation and partnerships. And we need the educational excellence to build the quality workforce and to develop programs to continue down the path of innovation, entrepreneurship, and growth. Uh, this is a place where innovation is being tested for other cities. We are not just the beta, we're the tip of the spear in a lot of ways. Uh, I actually think it's a great compliment to be considered a living laboratory. That means people find us interesting enough to want to dissect us and find out how we work. And that's a good thing, um, in, for the most part. Um, but more than anything, I'm excited about what this collaboration means uh, between individuals and organizations in the city. Um, everyone who's chosen to be here today is here because they have an interest in making Kansas City best. And there's going to be a number of conversations and breakout sessions in which you participate and contribute today, and those are going to be focused on how you can find ways to do the most good. And I'm always happy when people in Kansas City are looking for ways to do the most good for everybody in the city. That's why you're here today. That's one of the things that I know will come out of this partnership. Uh, extremely proud to have you in Kansas City and to see this partnership grow. And thanks to all of you for showing the interest and taking the time to be here to kick it off. It is a privilege to be here today. I um, am very grateful for those who have gone before me. Um, obviously, uh, my predecessor, Joe Reardon, was front and center in bringing Google uh, to Kansas City. And the partnership with Slide James has been a tremendous partnership um, that w only continues to grow and to flourish as we find ways to work together across uh, not just the digital divide, but the state divide. Amen. And we, um, the more work we can do in that area, uh, the better for our whole region. Very briefly, um, I managed to graduate from graduate school, and those of you with technical 
uh, techies will remember this, with a, an IBM 8088 <laughs> with dual five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Dual drive, man, this wasn't single, this is dual drive. <laughs> with a monochrome screen. Uh, and we took turns volunteering at our, uh, at our seminary in the library, um, taking the card catalog and entering it into the computer database. Um, so we could go to a digital card catalog in 1995. We've come a long way. Um, education has transformed my son, who's a Sumner at Sumner Academy in Kansas City, Kansas, um, has a laptop given to him by the district as a tool for learning. All of his textbooks are on that laptop. Um, his assignments are uh, transmitted to him uh, digitally. Um, really, there's no excuse why they're not getting done. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Um, he, can he can turn them in digitally in the, in the teacher's Dropbox. The technology has transformed in terms of the way we're doing education. The same is true of our economy. Kansas City, Kansas, historically, has been very good at manufacturing. We're very excited about the manufacturing renaissance going on nationally, and we're glad to be playing a key part in that. Uh, we've, been very, we've learned how to become very good at retail. Um, we have a lot of industries that we're doing well at. Um, one of the growing industries that we've got to move forward on, and this is one of the exciting things about this digital um, piece that Mozilla is working on, is moving forward the digital economy in our computers, in our communities, retooling manufacturing, retail, uh, service communities into the digital age is fundamentally essential. And from an economic development perspective, as well as a workforce development, pushing that back into the schools is fundamental. I believe code should be taught in our public schools as a foreign language. I believe that, I believe that there is a whole new way of communicating that is a, a language that is moving towards a universal language that people in China are using, that people in Korea are using, people in Germany are using, Code is becoming the language that is bringing us together because there's amazing things that are happening when people are writing in their own native language and someone has made a code that helps us to translate it into a language that we can understand. In the church, we would call that speaking in tongues. Amen? <laughs> We've been relying on the Holy Spirit all these years, and who knew you could code that? Um, But this technology is bringing our world together, it's bringing our community together, and it's transforming our educational and our economic development. And we've got to continue to push that to the, to the front. And my appreciation for all of you, the educators here who are working on making this a top priority for each of our schools, so that we can build this economy for the next 5, 10, 15 years. I can't wait till my um, son stands up in 20 years and says, you won't believe it. I had to carry all this I had to carry this phone around in my pocket. <laughs> what a waste of time. Um, I'm very excited about where we're moving, and I'm excited that Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri continue to be on the cutting edge, and I appreciate Mozilla's um, partnership, reaching out to our community, and recognizing the opportunity that we have to work together. Thank you for being here today. All right, who knew these guys had such a sense of humor? What an awesome group of mayors. You know, when we were in Tennessee last week, we had a, a kickoff event in, in Chattanooga. They also have two mayors. So we've got barbecue, the dueling mayors. It's, it's kind of how we roll here at, at Mozilla. Um, up next, I would, I would love to um, let you hear from the Deputy Director of the Kansas City Public Library. She has been a leader at the library for a long time, and we would really be interested in hearing all the direction of uh, your progressive leadership will take us. So, Chepto Kosatani Buckner, please come up. Good morning, everybody. This is really exciting to see the crowd here. Um, 
Crosby has touched on, on the vision and strategy of the library, so I won't go into depth on that. Um, and you will get a chance to see our innovative software lending library in a few minutes upstairs, and uh, David Lacron will, will, will spend the time demoing that. But there's one thing that I would like to let you know that is going on at the Kansas City Public Library. Uh, as Crosby mentioned, we've been a leader in bridging the digital divide since the 90s. The library has been that place where when you don't have access, connectivity, you come to use the library. Moving forward, what we would like to do is, uh, and we've been actually have had several meetings about this, is forming what we are calling a digital inclusion coalition. Many of us have digital inclusion initiatives, but we are doing it in a siloed way, in our own way. The concept here is that if we collaborate and strategically work together towards one vision of truly, truly narrowing the digital divide in Kansas City, that we will make an impact for our children and citizens for years to come. The meetings are happening the first Friday of every month here at the library. Current partners are City of Kansas City, uh, KC Digital Drive, uh, Metropolitan Community Colleges, Public Housing, uh, the library, um, most of the libraries, in, um, most of the public libraries in the metro area. But we want to invite you to join us in this mission of really truly narrowing the digital divide. There are two things in terms of the narrowing the, the, the digital divide, is that there is the potential now, there are people who don't have access currently, but there's a new potential which the divide is going to be, you do not have high speed connectivity. And how do we get access to that? So please join us in this mission and I'm telling you, in the next five years, Kansas City will be talked about as a leader in narrowing the digital divide. Thank you. So as we've, we've talked um, about the Gigabit Community Fund um, as a partnership with Mozilla and the National Science Foundation, Keith Marzullo from the National Science Foundation was supposed to be here today and um, talk to all of you about uh, this initiative and this project. And he's stuck in Washington, D.C. If you guys are watching the news, you know nobody got anywhere um, out of the East Coast and and Atlanta. So I have a little video from, from Keith that I would like to play for you. So give me just one second. Good morning, everyone. I wish I could be with you this morning, but weather is keeping me in DC. I hope that through this video, you'll catch my enthusiasm for this kickoff of the Gigabit Community Fund here in Kansas City. I first want to take a moment to thank all of those who have worked behind the scenes to make this event possible. The entire Mozilla team for all their efforts in bringing everyone together for this auspicious event this morning. The Kansas City Public Library for hosting this event. Mayor James and Mayor Holland for their leadership and especially for their vision and dedication towards making gigabit connectivity a reality here. And all the local leaders who are assembled here this morning with the goals of setting an example for the rest of the nation. I think we all recognize that we're at the center of an ongoing societal transformation. Consider for a moment what happens during an average internet minute. Over 200 million email messages are sent. Over 2 million search queries are made. 30 hours of video are being uploaded and 1.3 million videos are being viewed. 47,000 apps are being downloaded. That may be conservative. 100,000 new tweets, 700,000 Facebook status updates. Of course, these numbers are increasing. We are witnessing an explosive growth in data, connectivity, sensors, and computational resources. And collectively, this is transforming the way we work, live, play, and communicate. It is in this context that about a year and a half ago, the White House Office of Science Technology Policy and the National Science Foundation, working with a group of thought leaders from government, industry, and academia, helped establish the U.S. Ignite Initiative. With this initiative, we collectively sought to enable a next-generation gigabit-capable network at a national scale in hopes of bringing researchers, students, entrepreneurs, and innovators together to unleash a revolution in ultra-high-speed networking and to catalyze next-generation open-source applications and services on future networks. Now, you may wonder why we at NSF are interested in this. The National Science Foundation has a long history of supporting foundational research to advance the frontiers of computing, communications, and information technologies. 
Unlike many of our partners in the federal government, we don't have a specific sector-driven mission. Rather, we have a broad agenda of advancing the frontiers of science, education, infrastructure in all fields, yielding novelties that touch and shape our lives and that contribute to our economic well-being. In this spirit, our goal with U.S. Ignite is to leverage our long-standing commitments in infrastructure, notably Genie, and more broadly in areas of software-defined networking, wireless, data analytics, and beyond. Take Genie, for instance. We have worked with the networking research community to build essentially a programmable virtual laboratory or testbed for internet scale experimentation. And now this testbed is laying the technical foundations for U.S. Ignite, allowing us to stitch together islands of broadband in highly innovative universities and cities, and to create a national testbed for distributing content and enabling real-time communication and collaboration in ways that are simply not possible on today's internet. In the case of U.S. Ignite, by partnering with mission agencies like the Department of Education, we have sought to facilitate the research and development of new gigabit applications, digital experiences, and services that have the potential to transform all areas of national priority, including advanced manufacturing, education workforce development, emergency preparedness, energy, sustainability, health, and transportation. It's remarkable to see just how far U.S. Ignite has come in one and a half years' time. You heard from Chris about some of the success stories, and you will see some exciting demos later this morning. But from our perspective, our work is far from over. We're delighted by this kickoff of the Gigabit Community Fund and the Kansas City Mozilla Ignite Hub, which will focus on bringing innovative applications of advanced networking to bear here in Kansas City, particularly in support of learning experiences and workforce development opportunities. We are especially excited about the Kansas City Learning Hive that Mozilla will be catalyzing, since it offers the opportunity of citizen engagement in the process of developing and trying out new approaches to local and national problems. And by connecting with the partner city of Chattanooga, we will be able to establish a community of practice and demonstrate for the nation the potential of these ultra-high speed networks. We believe that the resulting apps will give us a glimpse into how we might catalyze the innovation ecosystem to develop the next generation of tools and services with enormous societal benefit. Now, beyond the Gigabit Community Fund, there are other ways NSF is supporting the U.S. Ignite initiative. For example, last summer, NSF issued a Dear Colleague letter calling for relatively small proposals or projects that would develop public sector Gigabit applications in areas of national priority. The wars that we make, up to 300 K each for up to two years support early and potentially transformative research ideas and approaches. To be more concrete, we asked researchers to think about four things. First, the area of national priority to which the application will contribute, for example, education workforce development. Two, the scientific and engineering motivation for the proposed effort. Three, the novelty and benefits that might accrue if the application of service were to be deployed. And four, the members of the teams who they are and how they'll work together to show results at some level of scale involving anchor institutions, campuses, and cities. Our expectation is that the projects we fund through this Dear Colleague letter will result in novel research paving the way to new applications that showcase the possibilities enabled by gigabit networks. I want to emphasize that we really wish to see in these proposals descriptions of how the app idea will directly impact, for example, education. A concept is great, but we'd like to understand how the curriculum will be impacted, exactly how the app will change the way the students interact and learn, and so on. Additionally, NSF has opportunities outside of U.S. Ignite explicitly that are quite relevant. NSF issues calls for proposals for researchers and practitioners to identify new ideas, advance them through foundational research, and transition them to practice more broadly. Our investments span core areas such as networking, virtualization, middleware, and cybersecurity. They also span cross-cutting activities that intersect with the same national priority areas that I've talked about, including big data. One program of particular relevance is a cyber learning program, which leverages new and emerging technologies to expand and transform lifetime learning opportunities, learning interests, and learning outcomes. So I encourage you, if you're interested, to talk with your colleagues and with your fellow Kansas Cityans to see what synergies there are and what opportunities you have for collaboration. Please feel free to contact me. My email address is kmarzull at nsf.gov, and I will point you in the direction of the relevant program manager. 
On behalf of my colleagues at NSF, we are excited about the progress that's been made from the collaborations involving the public sector, the higher education community, and entrepreneurs and innovators from the private sector over the last year and a half. And we look forward to continuing these collaborations in earnest in the years ahead through the Gigabet Community Fund. The work we are doing through U.S. Ignite is helping lay the groundwork for new enterprises, promote economic growth, improve our citizens, qualities of life, and fortify the foundations for U.S. competitiveness for decades to come. As a famous computer scientist Alan Kay once said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Through this partnership, we are all indeed inventing the future. Thank you. All right, that was pretty exciting. That did, I didn't sound like I was sincerely excited. I really was. That's the first time I saw that video. <laughs> he sent that late last night. I was kind of impressed that he was able to get, get some kind of green screen, green screen video production over to us just like that. So um, truly, that was, that was awesome. Um, at, at this point, I would like to bring up Mike Brown, the idea genius behind the afternoon sessions. He's going to talk about the unconference uh, set part of the program where you guys are going to get up out of your seats and move about. And um, he'll also go through the expectations for the afternoon. So I'm excited to bring up Mike. You, you sounded lukewarm excited about bringing me up, so that was... <laughs> Did you notice in the video, I shouldn't talk about it, but where, where they would do those sweep cuts, every time they came back from the sweep cut, he had a big smile on his face. <laughs> I want to find those in my life, I'll just go... <laughs> anyway. So as BrainZoomy, we're excited to be partnering with Mozilla, KC Digital Drive, the library, I'll advance this so we can see everybody here, National Science Foundation, Social Media Club, to design and produce the afternoon idea sessions that you all are going to be involved with, and actually getting down to tangible things and getting to the work that goes from prototype to actual app development. So I'll actually talk about that before we come back from lunch. One of the things we wanted to make sure, though, is that you all have an opportunity to not just sit here all morning and listen, but actually to chart your own course, to become immersed in the topics of most interest, to get to spend longer time, more detailed time with a whole variety of folks. So this unconference format, we're going to spend about the next hour giving you the opportunity to go talk to, you know, and look at pilots, look at community practices, what's going on there, get a national perspective. So if you look on the back of your program that hopefully you all got today, it's a list of all the unconference sessions. And those will be taking place in the mezzanine area. So up here to my right or to my left, there's a whole variety on both sides. And then also in the Hellsberg room, which is on the fifth floor, you can take the elevators right over here. You can actually walk up, uh, walk up to the mezzanine or uh, uh, take the elevator there as well. So over the next hour or so, take full advantage, chart your course, find your path, start to build that community. This afternoon, we're going to have a great program. We're going to have some wonderful facilitators who will make that happen. So I'm going to actually ask the facilitators to meet me up in room 310. We'll spend a little bit of time there, and then we'll dispatch out to the unconference. So I think other than that, it's basically let's come back down here at 1130. We'll have sort of a Mozilla Vision piece, talk about what happens this afternoon. So with that, let's adjourn, go to the unconference, and keep the learning going. Thank you. <laughs>